Hey guys, this is Rich. I am doing a short video today outlining a recent fishing trip I took to southern New Jersey. On this day, I fished three different locations looking to put together some sort of combination for a New Jersey slam. In this location that you see here in this video, I'm actually fishing a jetty that I had on my list of targeted locations because I gauged its potential for the day and the conditions to produce bluefish, weakfish, and striper to be very high. Before I jump into how I did at this location, I'm going to run through a quick explanation of this jetty. And as you can see in this area of view, it's a fairly large jetty. If you fish South Jersey jetties in the past, you'll likely recognize it. Um, there's a little help there with the title of the location. This is actually the Avalon, New Jersey 8th Street Jetty. It's a relatively large jetty for this area and it offers tons of potential for catching fish across all different tides and conditions. The jetty actually has over 1,000 feet of fishable rocks. So you can understand the entire layout if you've never been there before. To the north of this picture is Townsend Inlet, and that is at the top of the screen, and then obviously the south is at the bottom, so on and so forth. But this video isn't about fishing this particular jetty. It's about fishing any jetty, and in this case, I'm going to be outlining why I chose this jetty at this specific time for these specific conditions. So here's the setup. As I mentioned, the top of the picture is north, and I'm going to be fishing the incoming tide. And it's actually a spring tide. This simply means the tide on this day coincides with either a full or a new moon. In this case, it's a new moon. This means the tides will rise and fall further than they do on any other average day. It's important not because the water will be deeper or shallower at the extreme high and low. It's the fact that in order to reach these exceptionally high or low tides, more water needs to move in and out during the same tide cycle as any other day. So this sets up for stronger currents. So currents are important for a couple of reasons. Moving water brings with it more oxygen, which is important for fish, but also it starts to push the bait fish and the forage uh, through very predictable areas where the current is strongest. It makes for great ambush points for predator fish. So if you look at this picture, you can actually see on an incoming current, on the outside of the inlet, it's going to go from south to north. Once it hits the inlet, it will start to curve in, and in this picture, it will go from right to left. Now, a lot of people think an incoming tide means that the water is coming straight in at the coast, and on an outgoing, it's going straight out. It's not the case, and it's critical for you to understand that when you're looking for structure to fish. On the incoming tide, again, the water will move from south to north. If you've ever gone surf fishing and you cast your line out on the incoming tide, it's going to end up traveling to the north. And on the outgoing, it's going to start traveling to the south. So looking at this jetty, it really only offers a couple of truly prime locations to find bait fish being pushed by these currents towards the ambush predators. And that's where I'm going to focus on fishing. Okay, so on this jetty, there are a couple of good locations, as I said, so where are they? Well, there are, there's one that looks really good on most tides, and that's going to be in this section here. And that's going to be where any bait fish that are swept around the jetty and around the rocks through the current are going to get swept into an ambush zone for predators. The other location is actually in this area over here. And this area is interesting to me for a couple of additional reasons that I'll go into in a moment. Okay, so here's a close-up view of that jetty and the end of the jetty that I just talked about. So again, the current on the outside is going from south to north. It's taking this turn and now coming into the inlet. And that means that bait fish could get swept into this area here as the current hits the jetty and then has to come around to get into the inlet. So this is a good spot on the X. Uh, and, and if I were to fish on this side, I would think that there are going to be some ambush predator fish like flounder over here. Uh, but that's not where I'm going to fish today, and it's for a very specific reason. So how I'm actually going to end up fishing this is I'm going to focus in this area here. Now this, to me, is going to be a prime location to catch fish, given the conditions that we have right now. This area right here also sets up really nice. However, there are a couple of kids fishing on the end of the jetty, 
and I want to make sure that I give them enough space. They were there first. I'm going to let them uh, cast out and take that, that territory. But both of these areas are good for the same reason. Again, you have that current coming up here, and that's going to push fish in this direction, especially the bait fish. You now have the jetty right here, which is going to add a physical barrier to them. And then any predator fish can set up in this area here and essentially keep those bait fish pinned in. So again, we're going to have pinned bait fish in here. A couple of things that I want to do, that's a pretty large area, so I want to pick out where I'm going to cast. I end up casting into this region here. And it's a very good reason. And you can see a little bit of the reason right here if I remove that. You can see down in the bottom left right here, you can see some structure. And you can see some structure here. I actually have a better picture that I, I'm actually not going to show in this video, but there are actually a lot of exposed submerged rocks here. Um, exposed meaning they're up above the bottom. So they, they, they present a change in depth and a good place for the ambush uh, predators to hide. And then there are also some up in this area. And then there are some troughs and gullies that have kind of formed up in here. So this just leaves a lot of options for me. So I'm just going to be casting across this and seeing what I can pick up. Now I can see a lot of bait fish, uh, a lot of peanut bunker, a lot of spearing, uh, and I can tell that they're being uh, balled up by predators when I start fishing. And that's what you're going to see at the end of uh, at the end of this. So um, I end up catching over 30 bluefish in an hour and a half. The kids next to me that were fishing up in this area up here caught several themselves. Uh, there was a striper caught right in here, not by me. Uh, but it was caught in here. It was about a 23 inch, I believe. So a nice size striper. Uh, and the blitz went on for about an hour and a half. And then I packed up because I had one more location that I needed to hit so that I could get that, that third species for the New Jersey slam for the day. So with that said, I'm going to move on to just a, uh, a look at some of the hookups that I had following the setup of this. And, and you'll see it was, it was very successful. I'm getting bites every cast. I gotta put a smaller hook on. There's a little blue. Not bad. Oh, I killed my plastic. You need help? There you go. If there's water down there, he might make it. Because the tide's coming in. He didn't make it all the way down? Just leave him. Your life is not worth it, my friend. Just a fish. fish. Is that guy the catch? Yeah. Where is he? He's getting water. <laughs> 